Hello, welcome to Living History UK, and today we are in Pershaw in Worcestershire. That's right, and we're here to look at the town defences of Pershaw in World War II. I'm driving down the empty freeway. No waiting for the light to change. Pershaw is a small town in Worcestershire on the north bank of the River Avon and it's situated approximately 10 miles southeast of Worcester. Following the retreat from Dunkirk, defences sprang up at strategic points all over Britain, such as this river crossing at Pershaw. So what was the importance of Pershaw, and why was it called a defended locality? Well, for one, you've got the River Avon behind us, which becomes a natural stop line. Also, it's also the back way to Worcester. So when Lond if London was to get overrun, the War Cabinet would have been evacuated from London and they'd have been transported to Worcester. And Worcester would have become a citadel and that's where the War Cabinet would have run their government from. Adding to the importance of this location is out to the west is a RAF airfield and out to the east you've got another RAF airfield along with a radar station also. Approaching Pershaw from the south along the modern day B4084 the invader would first of all have to negotiate obstacles such as flame fugas, a highly flammable napalm-like substance. Arriving at the southern approach for the bridges, one of the first defences were these pre-planned spigot mortar positions, slit trenches, and then the anti-tank position. So the main focus of the defences at Pershaw as a defended locality is this building behind me. Now this is indeed a modern building uh, to the modern eye, but inside is the original anti-tank pillbox, and this would have housed a six-pounder Hotchkiss quick-firing anti-tank gun. So the anti-tank gun inside this position would actually be directing its fire up the southern approach towards Pershaw Bridge. So not all of the defences here at Pershaw would have been what's called hardened defences. There were soft defences too, such as this. And this is a remnant of an original slit trench which was dug during the Second World War. So part of the last defence for the southern side of the bridge would have been a pillbox and it just been a man pillbox. It would have been located here, but unfortunately it's been taken away. However, evidence does suggest that there was a man pillbox in this location. Because of the importance of this location, if the Germans had overrun this position, there'd be nothing stopping them on the way to Worcester. So the last resort to keep the Germans away from Worcester would be to blow both of these bridges. So in the event of that happening, the arches would have been rigged with explosives and if that time come, the plunger would be pushed and both bridges would cease to exist, trying to stop them from getting to Worcester. So obviously either side of the bridge would have been covered by static positions, but how would the bridge be defended itself? Because obviously with traffic coming up and down the road, it would still have been busy back in 1940. So the only way they could defend this bridge would be to put temporary positions up some of which are actually behind me. So these are cylindrical tank blocks. So these wouldn't have been permanently placed here. These have been on the northern end of the bridge, like we're stood now. They'd have been rolled away, put to the side, and then when the time came for them to be placed into position, they'd have inserted a rod through the top where the remnants of the hole is still there. They'd been rolled in position, laid up on the top, and then that would be placed pretty much how they are today now. The last defence on the bridge itself were vertical anti-tank rails, and these were designed to stop a tank in its tracks and help to slow the enemy advance. Like the cylinders, these were a temporary fixture, and the rails would be placed into sockets in the road when required. Scars of these sockets are still visible on the road surface today. Approaching the bridge from Pershaw itself, we can get a better outline of the defences on the north bank of the river. In particular, there are two spigot mortar positions, one of which is still in situ. So one of the first defences that are still present from the Second World War is this. Now this might look to the untrained eye like a lump of concrete with a piece of metal on the top, but it's not. It's actually a pre-planned defensive position and this is called a spigot mortar pedestal. Now the spigot mortar or blacker bombard as it's also known will be put into position, it will be dropped onto this pin, it will be pegged into position and the defenders will be able to lob high explosive mortar bombs onto the bridge. Moving further back towards Pershaw and more remnants of the defences, 
including this weapons pit. So one of the last defensive positions on the north side of the river before the enemy would have reached the town of Pershaw itself is here. Now you can't particularly see much at the moment, but if I step back, you'll see I move into a depression. And here is the remnants, still visible today, of a slit trench which would have been manned by the Home Guard during the Second World War. This building behind me was the location for C Company, the 4th Battalion Worcestershire Home Guard. Now, as you can see, it's now the local fire station. This is number 66 Bridge Street. This is the second location of a company headquarters from the Pershire Home Guard. Now, this headquarters location is far better suited than the one that we previously looked at over what is now the current day fire station. So if all the defences at Pershaw had failed and the enemy had got across the bridge into Pershaw itself, what next? A mobile reserve of regular troops will be kept in reserve for this very eventuality. Stop lines and defended localities were only expected to hold out for a short amount of time. Having well-trained and equipped regular troops who were highly mobile meant that they could be deployed where best required. If all else had failed, then it would be down to the auxiliary units, small groups of five to seven men who were highly trained silent killers and experts in sabotage. Operating from an underground base, their role would be to harass and hamper the advancing enemy. So there we go, that's a short video on the World War II defences of Pershaw in Worcestershire. Hopefully you found the video educational and informative as well. And if you don't already, go and follow us on Patreon and subscribe to us on YouTube. But until next time, keep, keep history, history alive. alive. I'm driving down the empty freeway. to change